All right, here we are continuing on with our week 10 lab. Let's, uh, I've gone to the week 10 lab and opened up the Kevin Bacon website. And here is the final result, JPEG. Uh, this is what we're going to create today. And now we're going to take a peek at the index.html. We've already taken a quick peek at this in the uh, inspector. And we've seen these parts of it. And now we're looking at it here in our code editor. And uh, let's take a look at some of the files we have here. In the Assets folder, you've got some CSS. And here you should be familiar with the Styles and the Normalize. And then you've got your Images. And in here you don't have anything for Images, but you do have a PSD document. That's the Photoshop mock-up that you're going to need to have Photoshop installed on your computer in order to be able to make changes on this mock-up and generate our images. But for now, let's take a look at the styles. Um, I want to look at this style first. These are all comments here, and I'll talk about those later. But this is something you should be sort of familiar with, the box sizing element. There is a slideshow that explains this in the week 8 folder. It was in preparation for the midterm, and I know some of you saw it because I saw this on a few people's midterms. But I'm thinking some of you didn't see it. So in essence, uh, what this is telling us is that when you add padding to an element, it would be nice if the element remained the same size and the padding was included in the size of the element rather than the padding being added to the element and making the element larger. So that's what box sizing border box means and it's just really helpful for all web designers to use if they plan to use padding and margin because it kind of separates those two things out. The asterisk is a different story. It sort of means Please apply this rule globally, no matter what I'm using in my HTML or CSS or divs or anything. Please apply that rule. This rule here is in reference to the floats, and I'm going to talk a little more about that later, but I want you to understand uh, that, you know, I, I think you may know already that this dot means that it's a class. So I've got a class here called clear fix after, and it will have something to do that fixes problems with floating elements. So uh, the other thing I want to talk about is let's take this. I'm going to scooch that down for now. I would like for your rules that you create on this CSS to be categorized. So I'm going to oh, look at me. I'm going to categorize this first section as um, text rules. So text and fonts. This is just a way to organize, I'll, I'll say rules for it. This is just a way to keep things organized. And then let's create another area that will be rules for layout and design. The thing is, you're going to have a lot of rules on this uh, particular website. And I think if you categorize them, it'll be easier to go back and find them. All right, so let's have a look at this final result so that we can kind of make a plan. And I want to talk to you about what we're going to do here. We are going to learn how to make a horizontal nav bar. That'll be fun, right? And it looks to me like they've got a uh, hover color, a hover background color. So that might be on a style rule that is not simply A, but A active, right? It might be an active link thing. And then you've got this, this image here, this image here, and this set of images. So you'll have three images to deal with. Um, you've got four separate images here, which I think we're going to use the float for. And then you have some text over here, and a question will be, how can we put this area and this area side by side without using a table, right? And we're going to have to get some specific colors, so we're going to have to use a color picker to get this color and this color and that color. 
So let's do that right now. I'm going to launch um, Adobe Photoshop. Okay, I'm going to launch Photoshop. Here's my Photoshop mockup right here. So if I double click this, I'm not within uh, Visual Studio Code right now. I'm right here on my Finder window. And here I am in Adobe Photoshop. So a couple things you should understand right away is that these are tools up and down this column. These are tools. If I click this little arrow, it will make it a two column toolbar, but I prefer one column. So I'm going to click those arrows again and make it one column. Whatever tool I choose here will be represented up here in the tool options panel. So if I click the move tool, I see an auto select button, which I definitely want to have checked. If I click the selection tool, I have a different number of selections here. If I click this lasso tool, another set of selections. So just to know that whatever tool you choose, some options will change. And as I said, I want you for today to keep this little checkbox marked. What that means is if you click on something, then let me get my layers panel open. In the layers panel, that item is selected. So if I click up here on the bacon, it shows me that selected. See how this is a little bit lighter gray than everything else? If I click the image, there's that. If I click this, uh, let's see, what did I just click? It's showing me that right there. If I click over here on this movie, it's that one. So each movie has its own thing. So uh, you've seen the tools and you've seen the tool options panel. These over here are the lay, uh, panels or palettes. I call them palettes, but a lot of people call them panels. And they can be moved around with these same little arrows that I showed you over here. And if you, by mistake, let me open up the layers palette, I can actually drag it out of that nested area and have it out here. But if I accidentally close it, and I say, oh gosh, where are my layers? I can't find them. I don't know where my layers are. You can always go to the window drop down menu. Anything that's checked off is showing. So I'm going to click layers, and there's my layers palette. And then I can also drag it over here and look for a horizontal blue bar and get it back up here. But you can always also go to window workspace and say, this is photography. And it doesn't really matter what workspace you choose. What matters is that you can get yourself to the layers panel. It looks like a little graduation hat. So right now I'm going to go to the tools and click on, for me this is red, but for many of you it's probably black and white. So you want to click on the top square, which is overlapping another one. Just click on it, and that brings you a color picker. So what I'd like to do is find out what color is this orange. If I click on it with the eyedropper tool that comes with the color picker, it's going to automatically put that color here. And it's also going to give me a hexadecimal code for it. So I know that this is the background color of my navigation bar. I'm going to select this and type Control or Command C to copy it. I have to say OK to the picker. Now I can minimize it, and I'm going to go to my Visual Studio Code page, the CSS, and I'm going to create a rule. It's going to be a nav tag because here in the HTML, I know that there is a nav section, and it's um, home, news, contact, and about. And here on my final result, I see that that's these. That's how I know I want the background color there. So I'm going to go to styles.css. I've got my nav rules started. And I'm just going to put in my background color. So I feel good about that. Now let's see if I have this page live. Let me refresh. And there's that background color. 
Uh, what other color could I get? Let me go back to Photoshop. I want to get, actually, let me minimize this and talk about back here on the final result. I want to get this maroon color. It's also on this and that. An American Icon, most popular films. What are those? Um, an American Icon, that's H1. Most popular films, that's H2. So now I've got a color for H1, H2, and for the hover. That's the same color on, uh, let's see, this one. Same color here, here, and here. So let's go to the CSS and put that in. Oh no, let's go to the Photoshop document and get the color. It's a lot of back and forthing, isn't it? I'm going to have to zoom in. I'm typing Command plus. You'll want to type Control plus. And I'll get my color picker. And I'll go right to the very middle. I don't want to get that pale part. I want to get the middle. A dark one and that is AC 211 E so now I can minimize it again and I want so multiple selectors are separated by commas do you remember that H1 and H2 that's going to be color oops the pound sign needs to happen Oh, maybe I did not copy it, because look, it's that same salmon-y color. Did I not copy it? Control-C or Command-C for copying. There we go. All right, oh, my pound symbol. And that's also the same color as, what did we say? This is a pseudo class, right? A active. And again, it's gonna be background color rather than, and I'm just gonna copy this, it's the same. All right, save, and let's see what our website is looking like. Let me close this navigation. It's looking good so far. I've got that color in there. I can't really see the A hover. Oh, yes, I can if I click on it. That's what the active means. Um, let's see. I think there's also this color is white, so I could also put in my nav uh, color white right let's go do that save and refresh now there's a lot more you can see that we need to do we need to get rid of the bullets we need to change the font but we'll do that all in the next video this is looking good so far